Well, welcome back, firstly. And my apologies for taking so long to get this last video out. It's just been a very, very busy time for me. But they are finally done. At the back we've got the Corvette Junior, which is a Tiva yellow finish. And that's a satin finish. So that was just uh, micro-meshed and just uh, left with a dull sheen. And we've done some shading to the, the sides and the back of the neck just to give it a bit of an aged look. Uh, and at the front we've got the uh, Corvette Deluxe, which is the uh, the upmarket version. The two pickup P90, we've got all the binding around the headstock and down the fretboard and around the, uh, the body. And the controls are pretty much the same as a uh, Les Paul, the, uh, the volume and the tone and the, the pickup switching and whatnot. So there's no surprises there. So firstly, a couple of things. You'll notice the uh, the black tar. Originally, uh, that started off as a dog hair finish. So it was black with uh, white grain fill. But I had some blushing in the uh, lacquer when I was spraying it. And it just came to a point where it was easier just to strip it back, which is what I did. Strip the whole guitar back, and I re-sprayed it black. And, and I'm glad I did. I actually prefer it more. I put the chunky pick guard on that we had made in video 4 and I thought it would look classier if we put a matte black pick guard on there. So that's what I went with and it does look better. I did film some of the finishing process along the way so we'll do sort of a flashback now and we'll go back in time and you can check out uh, how we got to this stage. Okay, so I'm just taping up the uh, the top of the headstock here where the fibre board is. We want to retain this black strip around the side. So obviously if I'm spraying the guitar yellow, uh, we need to make sure this is all taped off. So when I'm taping the fretboard, I tend to just move about an inch at a time. And I like to leave just a little slither of fretboard material exposed just allows me to get it nice and even. If I know there's an even slither all the way up here, I know that I've done a pretty good job of taping it up evenly. We've got a couple of coats of white on there, but we've sprayed it very thin. You can see all of the pores are still open. And we've got decent white coverage on there. And that's just to block the wood out so we can now spray the, uh, the colour coat. Alright, so we've got the yellow one now. And I've got three coats on there. But it's very, very thin. I don't want to fill the pores. So it was uh, a very, very light mix of nitro. in with uh, The majority of it was thinners and just the, uh, the colouring. So we've still got all the open pores here. And the idea is uh, I'll put a coat of clear over this and then we can pour fill with a darker colour and uh, we wipe that back and then we're ready to clear over the top. I'm just going to take some of this Timbermate filler and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it and just get it to a just a watery consistency. So that's about the consistency we're after, it's like a paste. So we've got the body sprayed TV yellow now, and first off we sprayed it white, and then I put a couple of coats of yellow, very thin coats. It's not actually yellow, it's, uh, it was a white lacquer with a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of amber, and uh, so it's not actually yellow, it's sort of a, uh, it's almost a mustardy colour. So the grain is all still open. This is one of the few finishes where you don't grain fill first. It's quite unusual. So we've got the colour sprayed. Now we're about to put the coloured filler into all of the pores.
see we're starting to fill the grain a little bit with uh, with the filler. It uh, certainly needs another round of grain filling though. And I've just got a damp cloth here now. And I'm just brushing across the grain. Just trying to clean up the excess that's actually sitting on top of the wood and not sitting in the uh, in the pores. Okay, so we've got this dry for most of the afternoon. And we can now peel off the, uh, the tape that we've got uh, covering the fretboard. Okay, it's decal application time. And I get my decals from Rothkar and Frost in the UK. They're by far the uh, the best decal supplies that I've come across. The decals are really thin. They're very easy to uh, apply. But, I mean, because they're very thin, they're very easy to break as well. So it's well worthwhile to order a couple of spares just in case. So they come on an oversized piece of paper that we need to... Uh, we just need to trim it close to the, uh, the writing. Doesn't really matter what shape you cut around it at all. Not for this anyway. These will totally dissolve, meaning the edges will, will not be visible once it is uh, set in the lacquer. So you're not going to see the shape anyway. So that's going to be set about there. So we've got a little bit of lacquer already on the headstock. Uh, it's not been sanded or anything. There's probably uh, two or three coats of lacquer on there, so there's not a great deal of build up, but you do need some lacquer on there for the uh, decal to stick to. Now we're going to use the microset solution as well. It's just kind of gummy, and what you do is you just wet the area with the solution uh, where you're about to apply the decal, and it sticks the decal down better. You can tend to get some little air gaps little bubbles and stuff like that and I find that it reduces that sort of thing it actually adheres the decal better to the lacquer just apply some solution with my uh, with my finger now I've got a bowl of warm water so the decal just goes into there and it takes 15-20 seconds for that to uh, to come loose Okay, that's ready. You have to be very careful here. First we want to move that into the right location. Just try and get it straight and even. paper towel and just uh, help you smooth it out. That's looking pretty good. So we'll let this dry for uh, two or three hours before uh, we put any lacquer over the top. Alright, well we've been laying down lacquer for the past uh, five or six days and we've given it a week to cure. There's been a couple of sandbacks in between just to level the surface out. But uh, we're pretty flat now. We're uh, at the stage now where I think we'd be pretty safe to uh, to wet sand that. So it's, it's nice and smooth. It's sprayed on really well. If initially the first couple of coats you can see the the grain telegraphing through the uh, finish but it's a matter of putting some more coats on you sand it back and you continue to uh, to load up the lacquer and eventually you'll uh, everything will level out I also sprayed a couple of tint coats and I sprayed it around this section here the lower end of the neck 
and also up at the headstock and it just gives it a, a little bit of a vintage vibe but just uh, we keep this nice and light here just looks like this uh, neck has had a lot of play on it it's nice and worn here and we've retained the color at uh, both ends all right so it's time to wet sand this guitar and we've got 1500 uh, grit micromesh and oh, I wish I could say it was exciting to watch but it's not There's not much to it all we want to do is just take all the orange peel off we just want to uh, get an even matte finish right across the uh, the lacquer now I'm thinking that I may only buff this by hand I'm not sure that I want a nice shiny finish on it something with a matte look or maybe a satin look is probably more in keeping with the you know the vibe that we're going for on this guitar I mean even if the uh, the lacquer was to sink back a little bit after we buff this out I don't think I'd mind that either just give it a a little bit of an aged look so you can actually feel it catching on the high spots when you initially start and it takes a little bit of sanding until you've taken all those high spots down but once you have you'll find that the uh, the sandpaper will just glide across so this is looking pretty good now I've got it all nice and flat and I've just removed the last of the, uh, the little shiny spots that were still left so that's looking pretty flat there's no shiny spots that I can see so I'm happy with that that's flattened out with 1500 so we just need to go around the rest of the guitar the same way as we did on the back and there's a lot of area to cover so it's going to take a little while you can see the area that I've wet sanded it's looking pretty good in fact I just noticed there's a little spot there that I'm going to need to fix up but uh, oh, there's another one there okay you've got to keep looking it's uh, something you come back to after you've finished and uh, and just double check Certainly most of this area here is wet sanded, it's all the same uniform sheen. And then over here you've got the uh, the orange pearl, the, the rougher finish that hasn't been sanded yet. So I'll do a section like that and then I'll probably do this section and then we'll just sort of work the way around the uh, top of the body. Now for those curves the easiest thing is just a sanding sponge, a bit of dowel. And just sandpaper. So we've got a firm backing with the dowel, but you've got a little bit of give with the uh, with the foam pad that's in there. And you could just get into the curves a lot easier. The thirty two hundred would be pretty hard push to uh, get a sand through on the corners on this group and we can relax a little bit now and just clean up all those corners okay so we've got the guitar buffed to 3600 now and I'm going to leave it like that it's got a, a, a nice sheen to it but it's not shiny uh, it's just what I'm after Alright, so we've got all the gunk that's got in onto the edges of the tape here. So this is lacquer thinners. And of course, you need to be really careful because this will dissolve the lacquer. You just drip it down the sides and you're done. So I just get a little bit on my fingertip. And I just run it down the edge, like so. It gives me a nice melted, blended edge on the side there and it will also clean up any lacquer that may be on the fretboard, on the top of the fretboard. You know, some frets won't even need scraping. Just the lacquer will do sometimes if there's not really any build up on the edges. But I can't stress enough how important 
it is that you'd be very careful on those edges, especially when you've got lacquer thinner on a rag. If you slip down the side, you'll, uh, you'll know about it. You'll leave a mark and uh, you'll have to buff it out. So you want to be very careful. You just want to just get enough on the rag to just cover the area you need to do. You don't want it dripping off. So this is just not fitting and the reason for it is we've got just a little bit of a build up of lacquer around the sides there. Okay, so we've got the same process to do for this guitar, and we're going to use a, uh, a white filler. So this guitar's just had uh, a couple of coats of black straight over the bare wood, and then it's just had a very thin sealer coat of nitro sprayed over that, so the pores are still really open.
So I'm just scraping a reveal at the top of the binding and of course the, uh, the black lacquer sprayed onto the edges so I'm just scraping a reveal here and just the bit of black paint that we've got just on the side here I'll just remove that in a moment but we'll get a nice sharp line uh, and a white reveal for the binding on the front of the guitar. So I'm just using a Stanley knife now to go around and just really delicately scrape the, uh, the, the lacquer that's left over. You need to take your time doing this and uh, do a good job. Uh, so a quick look at this tool, it's just a Stanley blade with a bit of tape on it and a bit of dowel. And I've just cut a slot down the middle of the dowel, there's a screw through there so I can adjust the tension and that is just threaded through by the amount of the reveal that you want to uh, scrape. Very simple to make, they take 10 minutes. Okay, so on the black guitar, it's a matter of scraping some of the gunk out that's built up by the sides of the frets. The, uh, the thinnest by itself is, uh, is not capable of removing all of this. We need to give it a bit of a scrape first. Gives us an opportunity to clean up the binding as well. just use the thinnest like we have on the other guitar. Alright, so the first thing we do is we mark it off. We need to see the top of the fret there so it's marked in black. And we've got a crowning file that looks like that. It's a three-sided file and there's safety edges on all sides so we don't dig into the fretboard we're not cutting grooves into the fretboard and basically all we're going to do is we're just going to file the sides like this all I want to do is just remove the uh, the flat spot on the top we just want to carve a angle on the side here and we carve an angle on the side there and then we just leave a, a strip down the middle that's untouched. So I've just got some sandpaper on a stick and I'm using it just to dress the areas that we just filed, just smooth them out a bit and when we buff it up we, uh, we won't have any scratches. We do one side and we do the other. So all the frets are done and we've just got a sanding sponge and just some uh, some old uh, micromesh 1800 grit. I'm just going to so I'm just bouncing this over the frets, and it's going to round the profile on the top for me.
so I'll give you a sound demo. Now I'm not the best guitarist in the world, which uh, will become very apparent very soon. But uh, I can play some chords and just give you an idea of what the uh, the different pickup configurations sound like. We'll do some clean sounds first. So we're on the bridge pickup. the middle position which is noise cancelling and the neck pick up by itself Okay, so we'll do some overdrive sounds now. So I've got the volume on three. We're on about five now. And I have filmed a sound demo of the black guitar. I didn't do the yellow guitar because um, I, they sound the same. The bridge pickup on both of those guitars, I could not tell apart. They were that close to one another. So um, the only thing that I would do differently is I did coil tap the uh, yellow guitar, the pickup. I tapped into the coil. Uh, I think it was 7,000 wines and then I added another 2,500 wines on. So when I activate the call tap, there wasn't as much of a difference in sound as I had hoped for. There was a tonal change, it became midier, but I was expecting more. 
so I may rewind that pickup and just tap into the coil a little earlier next time and see if that has any uh, any effect. Both of those guitars are prototypes for a couple of models that I want to start selling. So the back one uh, is uh, this is the first one I finished. I'll keep that. That can go into my collection. But uh, the one at the front, the Corvette Deluxe, is actually for sale. So it was built on spec. If somebody's interested in buying it, uh, drop me an email and we can work something out. Both of those guitars, the pickups, the P90s, are actually screwed directly into the wood, into the body. There's no foam cushioning. What I've done to get them to the right height is I created some wooden shims. So the pickups have been shimmed and then there's a screw going directly through the pickups directly into the body. Uh, I just prefer the sound of a pickup that's uh, mounted that way. Uh, they always sound better to my ears when they're uh, screwed directly into the wood. Now, sound wise I think these guitars they cover uh, a lot of ground you know anything from punk to rock to blues. Uh, they're pretty versatile. The P90s are a really uh, underappreciated pickup I think. They're a uh, a single coil so they are a, a noisier pickup they're a, they're a big single coil pickup basically is what they are and they sort of bridge the gap between a humbucker and a uh, strat style single uh, coil pickup they're sort of the middle ground there they're a lot midier and a lot meatier it's just there's nothing else sounds like a p90 so we've got a reverse wind on one of these pickups, so the middle position is noise cancelling on the uh, Corvette Deluxe. Okay, well, we finally got there. We've built two guitars. It's taken me a while, but uh, I'm glad it's finished, to be honest. It was, uh, it was a lot of work with, uh, with the other stuff that I'm doing at the moment, so uh, I'm glad that they're finally done. And they have come out really nice, so I'm really pleased with both of them. They are two models that I want to start selling, so if anybody's got any interest in ordering one, uh, just drop me a, uh, an email. They can be customised whatever way you want, whatever finish you want, binding, no binding, any pickup configuration, wiring configuration you can think of. So there's a lot of flexibility with, uh, with the design. So anyway, I just want to thank you guys for uh, sticking by and being patient while I uh, knock these videos out. So I'll have a rest for a while and get stuck into some, uh, some of my other work that's got to be done. And before you know it, we'll be back with another build. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.